Hi, everybody. This is Ernie Harwell. We're going to talk with one of baseball's outstanding sluggers and one of the few men in the history of baseball to hit four home runs in one game. He's the very first of all Rocky Colavito. Rocky, they don't call you Rock the Sox for nothing. When you tag a ball, it really travels. What kind of food did you eat as a youngster, anyway? Well, to be truthful, Ernie, I got as much Italian food as I could get because I really love it. I'm one Italian that really likes Italian food. No wonder you got so big and strong. You're a genuine heavyweight, six foot three, 195, and it's easy to see where you get plenty of muscle behind your drive. But is it uh, really muscle or is it finesse? Well, Ernie, I think it's uh, mostly a little finesse, and uh, of course you have to have a little uh, certain amount of strength and uh, a little wrist action, and I think it's a combination of a few things, including a very important one is coordination. When you talk about wrists, uh, Rocky, some fellas seem to be born with strong wrists, but what about the kids who aren't that fortunate? What can they do to develop their wrist action? Well, Ernie, what I did was I squeezed a rubber ball all winter. I still do it. I start in uh, after the holidays, and I do it for about two months before I get down here. And I think it builds up my wrist and my forearm. What would you say is the best way to develop your throwing arm if you're a youngster without a very strong one? You start off throwing a ball, maybe at uh, 50 or 60 feet, and uh, throw a little easier and then a little bit harder and a little bit harder. But as you do that, you should spread the distance up to about 100 feet, especially for an outfielder. And uh, when you get there, try to throw the ball to your, the fellow you're throwing with about the height of the letters on his uniform. One of the things that comes with experience, Rock, in playing the outfield is throwing to the right base in different situations. Is there any cardinal rule that applies to this phase of the game? Yes, there's one real cardinal rule, and that's, and that's keeping the ball low enough that your cutoff man can handle it. And this way, if the ball isn't thrown too high, uh, the base runner won't have such a good chance of advancing a base because he'll see the ball up high, and he'll just keep right on running. So you have to keep the ball down low enough where it has good zip, and also the cutoff man can cut it off and throw to another base if, if, need, to, if need be. Rocky, what about signals given to you when you're batting? What would you say is the simplest form? Uh, well, Ernie, uh, simple, well, that's a hard question to, uh, to really answer. Uh, we have a take sign, and uh, a fellow like me usually uh, has a chance to hit most of the time. I mean, I get a take, and I get an occasional sacrifice bunt, but not too often, so uh, I don't have too much difficulty with those things. Well, now that we're back on that subject of hitting, you've always had the reputation of being a good fastball hitter. Did you have a good teacher, or what's the story behind that? Well, I think the fastball hitter goes back to one of the original questions about the coordination and, uh, and timing and uh, reflexes and finesse. Uh, to be a good fastball hitter, you've got to be quick. You've got to have quick, strong hands, and you've got to be able to wait and hit the ball at the time when it gets there. And, of course, when you're waiting on that fastball, you must be quick. So that's, uh, that's the most part about fastball. It's a blessing in a way. Rocky, I think everybody also would like to know the reason why you always seem to go through those setting up exercises after you step into the batter's box. People think that you do it to put a show on. It's nothing like that. Fact is, I don't uh, even realize it most of the time that I'm doing it. The people tell me that's the reason I know it. And I see pictures of myself, of course, when they take some hitting pictures. And sometimes I look at it myself and I say, do I do all those things? <laughs> it's, it's really hard to believe, you know. I, and I know the reason is that uh, it really is tension for me. Well, Rocky, we're sure that you know what you're doing because you've had some big days for the bat since you broke into the majors. Now, in your opinion, what which one actually was the biggest day? Well, Ernie, I'd have to say the four home runs in one game on June the 10th, 1959 in Baltimore was the best day I've ever had at the bat. And I think a close second is the day in Washington when I hit four home runs in the doubleheader because that ballpark is also very large. You've been hearing from that fine outfielder, Rocky Colavito. Thank you, Rocky, for talking baseball with us. This is Ernie Harwell saying so long, everybody.